I'm a Purkan and Noriate, which yeah. is a master of ceremonies for Lukumi ordinations. I direct the rituals from beginning to end. And for many years I was also an Apuom, a singer. I used to sing primarily with Ezequiel's uh, drums, Ezequiel Torres. Yeah. Uh, I was the official Apuom for his drum until about the 19, until about 2000 something. Uh, at which time I withdrew health reasons and so on and so forth. Um, since I was a kid, basically, I was singing the Orisha religion, and I started singing maybe at the age of 13 in New York with some of the Guido groups and some of the Ambericola groups at that point in time. Uh, I moved to Puerto Rico, where the position, both positions became official, the Oriate and the Apon. And then I moved over to Miami in 84, and until about 2000-something, I have been singing drums in the city before the influx of, of uh, this larger group of Cuban immigrants that's arriving now, of uh, Odisha people. I was probably one of the most popular singers because I was very strict. Strict uh, in what sense? Uh, I did not allow any... Uh, um, I, I didn't allow things to get out of hand in drums and I was very strict with procession and the way you know, the dances had to be performed, and, you know, uh, more so than others. Sometimes possession is a tricky thing, right? And the Orisha has to respond to what I'm singing. And I am sustaining a conversation with the Orisha and the person being mounted, right? To which that energy as it's entering the body also has to respond. And when things were not the way they should have been, I found ways to just stop, pull the person to the side and tell them, wake up. And some people didn't appreciate that. Okay, interesting. Because there's a psychological effect as well involved in this whole process. I mean, it's unavoidable. There are people who want to be possessed so badly that they can induce it without truly being possessed. I've seen that happen many times.